Hello everyone, my name is Ajibala Kamo. I am an investment analyst for Niametrics. I am joined by Liam Bosso. Liam Bosso is the CMO at Wing Riders. So interesting fact about Wing Riders. Wing Riders is the second largest DEX, that's a decentralized exchange on the Cardano blockchain, ranking number two, surpassing the infamous Sunday swap. So Liam, how are you doing today? I'm very well. The infamous Sunday swap, is that what we call it now? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. So, um, yeah, I'm very Ian, well. tell Thank us a you little bit about yourself. Yeah. Um, well, so I'm the CMO, Chief Marketing Officer at Wing Riders. Uh, I've been in the crypto space for about seven years. Uh, I was the Chief Marketing Officer at uh, Diginex, now called Equinex, which are listed on the NASDAQ. Uh, I was head of corporate communications and investor relations at uh, Banksa, which listed on the Toronto Stock Exchange about a year and a half ago. And prior to that, I was the chief marketing officer at BC Group, which used to be called ANX, who are uh, listed in Hong Kong. So I've been in the crypto space a while. I was here during the sort of 2017, 2018 ICO boom. Um, you know, I'm pretty familiar with Ethereum. Cardano is relatively new to me. I mean, I've been aware of the chain, obviously for the last couple of years, but I haven't really got into it uh, professionally until Wing Riders. Um, I was looking around when I finished up at Banksa for a project to get involved with. I spoke to a, a bunch of different projects. I have sort of a side business, uh, side hustle, if you want to call it that, where I do some consulting work for, for projects, help them with marketing. That could just be writing a white paper or strategy. Um, when I spoke to the Wing Riders guys, um, the development team is super, super strong. Right. And I feel it's kind of having been in the space a while. One of the things I think about a lot is if you don't have a really strong development team, then essentially you're just marketing, right? Like you just, you're hyping people up and talking about how you, you, your coin's going to moon. But if you're not actually building something really, really strong, don't have a really strong development team, essentially all you're doing is acting as a middleman. Um, so for me, when I spoke to the guys and I sort of started to understand the development piece, I, I was super interested. I wasn't sure that I wanted to jump over to Cardano because I know it's super technical and everyone in the space is, you know, it's a little bit, uh, people say you've drunk the Kool-Aid, right? Like people who either love Cardano or they hate it, right? And the people who love it, you can't talk to them if you don't like it. Um, but yeah, it's been a very good trip. I think we're doing, we're doing okay. Um, yeah, we're number two, eyes on the prize, number one. Um, you know, we'll see how we go, but I feel pretty confident. Um, yeah, so that's me kind of in a nutshell, I guess. All right, thank you so much for that. Um, I think um, generally speaking, I think Cardano is more community back than it is institutional in fact. And that's one of the major things that um, uh, the community or the entire cryptocurrency space is really all about, you know, community decentralization, basically not just one big fat wheel of institutions coming into the space and, you know, basically owning everything, but basically individuals, both big and small, coming into the space and actually doing something amazing. So I think that's one of the reasons why I love Cardano as a cryptocurrency on its own. Aside from the fact that I actually did make quite a bit of money invested in Cardano. So <laughs> that's by the way. But yeah, um, Wing Riders. I mean, we've had so many DEXs out there. I mean, from mm -hmm. Ethereum to Solana to basically every major blockchain out there. We've heard about so many DEXs. But I want to ask you, what is Wing Riders really all about? Tell us the nitty gritty. Tell us how it yeah. is unique. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's a couple of ways I can approach that question. So I'll start how we started on the project and then I'll, I'll sort of narrow down you know uh in a lot of our blogs especially the early ones probably more than anything else we talk about being developer led right a developer mindset um so what that what does that mean we really think about building something of value and you know obviously we're commercial because we're, we're a business right we're setting up eventually we'll be a DAO, so we're trying not to be a company um, you know, we're trying to, to move into the sort of DAO voting model as quickly as we can. But we see ourselves as an infrastructure piece to Cardano. Mm -hmm. And what do I mean by that? I mean that ultimately, you know, in the future, as Cardano builds out, people really need a safe, secure place where they can do swaps, right? Maybe you're building a DAP. Maybe a DAP, has, you have your own token and you want to, you know, 
whatever sort of service or DAP that you're creating, you need some sort of swap functionality in the back end. It's very easy for people to plug into wing riders and we're not precious about the brand. Obviously we don't want to, you know, get diluted and plug into poor apps. But for us, we really see that infrastructure piece for the Cardano network to really be, um, you know, a, a valuable tool. And if, if you look back to sort of middle of last year when uh, there was some changes to Cardano that actually made the DEX viable, a bunch of projects sort of rushed out the door and were immediately like, oh, we're, we're launching a DEX. You know, we saw the same things that they saw. We saw the opportunity for a DEX, but we spent probably a couple of extra months really building out the proof of concept and to look at technically or what could be done. So we probably, you know, relatively, probably we are weaker in marketing than some of the other projects. And I don't mean that we're not as good. I just mean that we, we are really hesitant about putting messages out there unless we're really confident that we can actually deliver. Um, you know, we hate the whole, you know, over promise and under deliver that takes place in the crypto community a lot. So for us, you know, every time we make an announcement or we talk about new functionality, we're a hundred percent certain that, that it's going to work. Right. Um, thankfully we're powered by vacuum labs. Uh, I'm not sure if, how familiar your listeners are, but vacuum labs has been, you know, they're one of the biggest development shops in the Cardano space. They worked with Emergo, they worked with IOHK now IOG. Um, you know, they worked on the Yoro wallet version one. They actually bought Trezor and Ledger to Cardano so that, in terms of wallet technical technicality, they're probably definitely, well, pro definitely probably the most experienced team in the space, right? They've worked across so many different wallet projects. So when you look at the DEX, you know, we launched on the 12th of April. Uh, so what's now a little bit more than two weeks. Um, we've already got Ledger, right? Ledger, you can now trade directly on your, with your Ledger through your Android phone. So we're the first to do that in the market. There's a couple other DEXs now that are saying you can trade with Ledger, but the difference between them and us is we have a deep integration. We, we did, like I said, we, we did the initial integration to bring card, uh, to bring Ledger and Trezor to Cardano. So our understanding of, of those, those products and how they can be integrated. Most of the other DEXs are talking about working with Ledger. There's a software layer in the middle. And, you know, a software layer means that whoever you, whoever software you're using, you have to trust them. Right, you have to make sure that that software is legit and it's been audited and it's been tested. So it's another risk, right? So you're now compounding risk. You're trusting the DEX, you're trusting the software layer, and then you're trusting Ledger. For us, it's really just two, right? It's Ledger and us. And I think if nothing else, over the last couple of months, I think we've proved our developer credentials. All right, thank you so much for that. I think the major thing is, um, you know, from what you basically said was basically how Wing Riders is um, developer focused. You know, you guys are focused on the product and not just the hype around launching a new token and the firmware around it all. You guys are actually building something of worth. And, you know, with so many projects in the cryptocurrency space, it's actually very, very rare to see, you know, a lot of cryptocurrency projects that put their products first ahead of everything else because everybody just wants to make that quick buck in the space, you know, make that 2x, 3x and the likes. But I think we need more projects that are, you know, developer focused and are actually geared towards delivery. And that's very, very important in the long run. Yeah, very much. I mean, as I said, I've been in the space a while and I think my value is actually like my reputation, right? Mm -hmm. um, I'm very much user focused. Like I try to be a champion in the team for for the users right for the end users right what do they want what are they asking for what's going on like i'm on the discord channel a lot i've always been sort of hands on that way mm -hmm. um you know my value is that people know if there's an issue like i will fight right i'll fight to try and help them and, and largely the whole wing riders teams like that right we're trying to deliver a great product i mean if you think about just just first in terms of features so i said i'd start at the top and now i guess i'm down at the gritty end right yeah so we introduced ADA staking first, right? Automatic. So if you've got liquidity on the platform, you're automatically getting staked. A couple of other DEXs have, have now started to do that, but we were the first, right? Um, direct to debt, token to token swaps. Uh, initially, a few of the DEXs that were coming out were doing token to ADA, then to another token, right? So you're paying double transaction fees. We moved around that. Uh, I've talked about hardware wallet support. We launched with stables, which is a first, right? 
um, bringing sort of ERC-based stable coins to Cardano, you know, infrastructure support for dApps, all those things I've talked about. Um, we're going to bring, we haven't turned it on yet, but you can already see it in the UX UI. You're going to be able to vote about which staking pool you, you actually deploy your tokens in, right? Which is sort of ultimately where we're going. And then, then it's something that the community is really excited about is we're decentralizing agents, right? Everyone like a Bacho or a Scooper on Sunday Swap. Mm -hmm. um, right now, most of those people are whales, right? They have a lot of coins. They're just finding another way to make more coins. For us, you know, we are now in the process of testing and working on uh, the, the smart contract piece of that solution. But we want all of our users who, who put collateral down to be able to be agents, right? Because we're quite a thin client in terms of you, you can access us through the web, don't need to download anything. It, it, technically, that's relatively hard to do. But once we do it, essentially, we'll be truly decentralized, right? Okay. All right. Thank you so much for that. So my next question comes to why Cardano? I mean, Cardano is relatively new. You know, not a lot of people have built on the Cardano uh, smart contract. So I would say it's kind of like a risk for a project like yours to not go to the legacies. You understand what I mean? So why mm. Cardano really? Well, I think there's two, there's two, way, there's two re reasons. First, because it, it wasn't there, right? There wasn't DEXs. There wasn't that functionality. Uh, sort of the subset of that one was really, it was only when Plutus came in sort of middle of last year, a little bit earlier than middle of last year, that, that, that it was even possible, right? Um, so so it, it was the right time for Cardano to happen. Two, you know, powered by Vacuum Labs, those guys have been working on Cardano for four years, right? Which is literally since inception. The Cardano approach, some people agree with it, some people don't. Obviously, I'm now in the Cardano space, so I agree with it. Um, you know, they looked at, the old saying is sort of, there's first generation blockchain, which is Bitcoin, which just does one thing, value transfer, right? No smart contracts, it's just me and you, we don't trust each other, but we're doing swapping some value. Uh, then you get Ethereum, then Ethereum has smart contracts, which allows you to add extra functionality. Ethereum doesn't match Bitcoin in terms of value transfer, right? Bitcoin is very simple, one use case, works very well. Then the third generations like Solana, Cardano, there's a bunch of others, but you know, those are kind of the, the, the key ones that people pay a lot of attention to. You know, these blockchains are coming a little bit slower or they're a bit newer, but essentially they're kind of learning from the mistakes, right? So proof of work, at least for Ethereum, is now seen as a bit of an issue, right? There's so much volume on the network, uh congestion on the network the actual transaction fees on the network cardano is moving a little bit slower they're probably a little bit more considered so you know functional programming language is different right you're talking haskell versus solidity so that makes a huge difference as well um the types of developers who code in haskell tend to be very very kind of rigorous in their approach um so so those would be all the things right it was the right time there wasn't that infrastructure piece built out yet uh, the opportunity and the actual technology on Cardano really just got there to allow DEXs to be possible. Um, we we have a through our relationships we have like a pretty long track record on Cardano, so it was a natural fit. Thank you so much for that, Liam. So uh, my next question is: I think one of the most unique features for Wing Riders is the fact that you guys are bringing USDT and USDC, the two biggest stable coins in the world right now, to the Cardano mm. blockchain. And you, you, I can say that we're confident that that's a really, really tall order. You know, bringing that to an entire to an entirely new blockchain. And you guys are partnershiping. Well, you're doing a partnership with the. Uh, Milkomida Foundation to do that. So can you tell us a little bit more about this partnership, please? Yeah, well, I mean, it's similar in a way to, I mean, Milkomida is essentially a DC Spark product, right? DC Spark's been in the space a long time. Uh, we've been in the space a long time. So, you know, you, you get to know what people are working on. Um, it's actually a couple of months ago that Milkomida made their first announcement, right? They put out a press release, I think December or January talking about it they weren't ready but they were sort of saying like we're building it so it, it just seemed logical to us that if you go back a couple of years to when tether and then uh you know gemini launched a stable coin then usdc right that ultimately 
brings a lot of liquidity in the market, right? People who are trading, especially very volatile times, that they have a safe harbor asset that they can move into. So having those on Cardano actually really should overall improve the whole the whole ecosystem because it it brings liquidity, it brings a safe harbor asset, um, it 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 essentially allows uh, there to be a much higher volume of trading. So we were kind of aware of what they were doing. We had a kind of relationship because we've been in the space a while. We started talking to them. Um, it, it wasn't perfect, right? So when we wanted to go to mainnet, we uh, wanted to go to mainnet with those features, right? With a stable coin. And they were still in the final testing phase. So we had to wait a little bit. When we went live, it was only the institutional bridge that was live. It wasn't the retail bridge. So the retail bridge has now gone live. So for us, you know, it, it did seem like uh, a no-brainer, like bringing stables to uh, to Cardano it seemed like something that was worth doing, right? We wanted to have a big launch and bring value. So, yeah, I mean, it just, it, you know, uh, we also kind of work with Flint Wallet, right? So Flint Wallet provides a wallet solution. So, again, those guys have been in the space a while. We're pretty familiar with what they're doing. As I said, uh, some of our developers have been working in the wallet space for a while. So, we really love this space, right? We're really passionate about it. So we, you know, when people publish their, they open source their code on GitHub or GitLab or anything like that, we're always keen to look at it to see what other people are doing. Have they got a different approach? So we just sort of saw the obvious correspondence. Like if we put those that partnership together, that would allow us to bring stables to Cardano for our users. So we did it. Awesome. I think that's actually a very, very big move for the Cardano blockchain, you know, especially, you know, there hasn't been any significant native stable coins of the Cardano blockchain right now. And, you know, brings what people already trust, USDT, USDC to the place, it makes it a very, very big game changer. Um, mm, for sure. Of course. So um, speaking on uh, Wing Riders TVL, that's the total value of the game. You guys, a week after you launched, the TVL exploded by... 8,000%. I mean, yeah. my question really is, you know, what do you think was responsible for this successful launch? Because, I mean, you guys, like I said, you guys surpassed one of the biggest uh, DEXs at the time, you know, when you came into the space and then you're literally the second best or the second biggest in terms of TVO. So tell, tell me, what's, what's, what, what did you guys do differently? Um. I mean, I think it, it leads back to that, what I said before around the developer mindset, right? So we, we could have got to mainnet maybe two weeks earlier, right? We were actually held up because we were waiting for our audit to come back and there's not that many really credible auditors in the space. So the auditor we work with, Certic, we had to wait a little bit of time for them, um, which delayed us a little bit. We initially wanted to go earlier. And then once we got the audit, we were then waiting for a couple of partnerships. One of them was Milkometer and Flint to bring stable. So we obviously wanted to launch with that. Um, I think that's a huge, that's a huge bonus, right? Um, there's always a couple of strategies when you're lo looking to launch a new product. Do you want to be first to market? Do you want to sacrifice that first position to make your product like a little bit better? And, you know, Sunday was first. There's no denying it. But everyone sort of understands that Sunday had a few issues. There was a card starter issue on their IDO. There was uh, technical issues on their platform. Uh, MinSwap went next. Uh, I think we're all aware of, you know, what happened with MinSwap. You know, they're still going really strong. They're still the number one. They're holding the place. So they've done a really good job. Um, from our side, we just took a little bit more time and we thought about what people actually want, right? So Stables is one. You know, staking of ADA is another. The way that we look at yield farming is a little bit different as well decentralization of batches, which is coming. Um, you know, none of the other guys were talking about this sort of stuff. And ultimately, like, why are we all in blockchain and Web3? You know, Web3 is a bit of a buzzword now, but we are, right? This is the era of autonomy, right? We're trying to get away from, like, having your data harvested by Facebook so they can sell it as we're trying to empower people. And, and to do that, you know, being as fair and transparent on yielding and staking, you know, being uh, providing sort of decentralization of batches, all of that, you know, I think these things, it's just a choice, right? The users looked around, they, they picked a platform that they were comfortable with. I think technically, you know, we're at least equal to those, those other guys. Um, so for us, I think probably taking that little bit of extra time to develop those sort of partnerships, get them in place, do all that sort of stuff. I think that was good. 
Um, we were very selective with our investors, our institutional investors. I mean, if you look at, at our list, right? So C Fund, everyone knows who they are. Um, you know, Coty, they do payments. They've been in the space a long time. People know who they are for sure. Animoca brand, like these, these are big companies. Um, you know, to this day, even on Discord, I get DMs every day from small venture capital firms that maybe you've never heard of, but they have a track record and they're like, hey, we'd like to take quarter of a million dollars of an allocation. Like we are not taking any institutions anymore, right? Well, that, 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 that's done. So I think partnering with those guys, we got to leverage their network. You know, we met other companies that are doing stuff that maybe they've been invested in. So there, there was an opportunity for partnerships. That's one. And then just taking that little bit of extra time and being pretty clear on our strategy, I think as well, was helpful. All right, thank you so much. I like when you mentioned, you know, um, the effect on institutional players, you know, basically institutional investors. I think it's very important that at, in as much as you're trying to seek funds to develop your, your product, you always have to make sure that you're you're with institutional investors that you're easily able to manage the expectation, the general expectation. Mm -hmm. But when you have so many institutional investors, it's always difficult to manage expectations. But when you have a limited, small, secluded amount of people, you know, bringing in funds and they understand the vision, it's always easy to, you know, have conversations and to, uh, more or less like mitigate the expectations in the long and short term. So it's very, very important. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it, it, there's a, a definite thing, and you're aware of it as well as I am, like in the Cardano community, people think VC is a dirty word. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Like they would just invest in 40 products, right? And they would just be like, five of them will make 10X and then we'll make money. And the other 30 probably we won't. We had with our, uh, our investors around what they wanted to do, how that worked, you know, long-term vision for Cardano in moving the whole ecosystem forward. That was really important to us, right? It's really important to us. So that you've got to look for partners that are aligned with you philosophically, right? For sure. Awesome. Thank you so much for that. Um, I think uh, my final question would be, you know, speaking on regulation, right? I think regulation mm -hmm. has become a very, very big focus of um, the entire cryptocurrency space right now, especially, you know, the bill that was passed in the UK, the US uh, presidential mandates basically bring, you know, so um, basically asking different governments or our startups to bring in some form of regulation for the space. And, um, you know, what, what do you guys think in the short term would, you know, the future will hold for DeFi in general and decentralized exchanges, right? Because you guys mm -hmm. offer a service whereby, you know, it's keen to decentralization and animosity. There's no KYC and all that. And that's what regulation mm -hmm. right now frowns against because they want to be able to monitor who and what is doing this. But, you know, what is the future? What do you think the future will hold for DEXs uh, like yourself and DeFi in general? Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting question, right? The, the regulation question has been around for a couple of years. And I, I think sometimes you've got to step back and, and say, like, there's a lot of people in crypto who are just like, I hate all regulation, right? But what are they trying to do? They're trying to, I mean, especially the SEC, right, in the US, which, you know, if they make a ruling, a lot of countries will follow what they do. Countries tend to vary, but the SEC carries, carries a lot of weight especially because they're the one that will prosecute you if you're overseas, right? Very few other countries will chase you outside their borders. But the SEC is trying to protect like a 75-year-old woman from Kansas who doesn't really know what she's doing and she's just putting some money in the stock market. They don't want her to get scammed, right? And we've all got to acknowledge it's an open secret, right? That there's a lot of scams in crypto. So at the moment, DEX is a, is a very wide open area. Um, to trade on our platform, you know, we care really strongly about our users' privacy and we would never restrict that. We do, we will always make our best efforts to, to align with regulation that, that impacts us, right? At the moment, it's kind of a gray area. When we uh, do our TGE, we're already pretty transparent about that. You will need, because you're buying tokens, um, you, you will need your KYC. Uh, if you're earning them through yield farming or something like that, the, the amounts are quite small. So we're, we're not going to cover to these people, but, but to engage in a transaction with us, that, that will be, the KYC will be required because from a, a regulatory point of view, that, that's the mature kind of um, proper approach. 
So the regulators are trying to protect people who maybe don't understand the risks of the investment, right? I know a lot of crypto people who are super knowledgeable, right? They know that they lose money. I've lost money before. I've been hosed, right? I've been wrecked. But um, it was my money and I knew what I was doing. And I got wrecked because, you know, I left my 2FA at home. And by the time I got home, the position had moved. Um, those type of people, we don't have an issue. Right, you know, they know they lose money, they get pissed off, they walk around for a week and they're upset, but they kind of know the risk. But it's other people who are like new to the space who maybe haven't done that many investments before. You know, obviously that's who regulators want to want to look after, right? The second thing is tax, and the third thing is you know counterterrorism financing, any money laundering, and all that sort of stuff. So obviously it's a grey area right now. You just have to make best efforts, right? Best efforts to try and be a responsible player. If you're a negative player and you're like screw regulation and do all that, like that, that's not not helpful for the whole industry, right? There's already a bit of a negative reputation, a bit of a stigma around some parts of crypto, right? Um, because you know there's been scams, there's been rug pulls. If you talk to my mum, she's like in her seventies, she doesn't know that much about crypto. She keeps asking me, should she buy Bitcoin? Um, but you know she sees the news and she sees you know a hundred million dollar scam here, rug pull, all this stuff. So she gets paranoid. So that, that, that's a real thing in industry. So you just got to be a responsible player, right? Um, when you have money, you, 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 that money has been raised to, to like build a business, right? So you shouldn't be flying everywhere on private jets and drinking Dom Perignon, right? Like you should be responsible. There's a, a, a responsibility there um, from that perspective. And, and you're trying to build a product that your community are really invested in and they like it. And we're trying to be long-term. So you just got to be responsible. You know, if regulation changes, I hope it's light touch, right? I hope they don't come in and just like put heaps of laws in. So yeah, I do really hope it's light touch. I hope they allow innovation to continue. But ultimately, you know, you don't know, right? <laughs> different government gets in. They have a slightly different approach, right? Before Biden, nobody really did anything in the US. Now Biden's in apparently going to do something. Five years ago, Australia was at the forefront, really, in Asia Pacific. And then they just really didn't do anything for like four or five years. So different government, different approach. So I don't know what's going to come in. I wouldn't speculate. You know, if a regulation impacts us, we'll, we'll make best efforts. All right. Thank you. Um, before you go, we, I usually ask everybody um, that I interview, what are your top five cryptocurrencies right now? Ah, interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, so I was trained in Bitcoin by Bitcoin Maximus. So Bitcoin's always in my top five. Um, I'd still have to say Ethereum, uh, just the diversity of projects. Um, Cardano, obviously. Uh, I quite like Avalanche. And then the fifth one, you know, there's a few around that I don't mind. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I might have to say Solana, right? Um, I've had a little bit to do with Solana. I've done some trading on Solana. It's interesting kind of what's going on. I used to be really interested in uh, Tezos. Uh, I just haven't really seen them doing much recently. So I'm not really sure where they are in terms of the roadmap. I haven't looked at it for a couple of months, but yeah, that would be my top five. Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, Solana, and probably Avalanche. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. Um, Liam, this is the end of the session. Thank you so much for coming on board. Thank you for gracing us with your presence and basically able to answer questions about wing riders and basically what wing riders are about, what you guys are doing. It's really, really awesome. Important. It's really important for our listeners to understand because this is more crypto education and people to understand what crypto is all about, the value added services that people can actually tap into and mm. be able to more or less generate some level of wealth for themselves and have more information in general about the whole space instead of, you know, the yep. old rock pools and, uh, and the hacks and the likes, you know, people need to see the value of it all. And it's very, very important. Thank you so much, Phil. Uh, Liam. No problem. Thank you very much, Ajibo. I really appreciate it. And uh, to all your listeners, always do your research. Right? <laughs> always do your research. Don't just push the trade button mm -hmm. or the swap button. Do your research. Know what you're doing. You know, this is a wide open space. We call that Dior in the crypto space. <laughs> DYOR, <laughs> do your own research, guys. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, just, yeah, I'm really, uh, I enjoy the opportunity to talk to you. Uh, I hope I educate some of your listeners. I hope they come over and check out.